eight years ago, <laughs> we are going at it. Dana put us through a, a back workout. Yes. Or did I put you us through a back workout? I think it was, I think it was a like hybrid. both. Yeah, we we, we kind of went back and yeah. forth. One thing, I listen, I've trained with a lot of different people. And, you know, when you and I have had the ability to train with each other, I was like, let's go. You know, people want to do it for the gram. You train. Yeah, I We've actually want to train. Of times. Oh, yeah. yeah and I, that was the first training session, if I stand, stand, you know, if I'm correct, if I'm wrong, correct me. But at least that training session was one for the books. And I was like, a know, lot of volume, a probably. A lot of volume. You're yeah, I love volume. Yeah. That's me too. So I love volume. Most people start tapping out with me on volume. Yeah. Or they start finding the easier pathways or they'll do less reps mm-hmm. that was your world so yep. maybe we'd done a little bit less weight but you were putting in the work and i was like holy shit she ain't gonna tap out no nope. she ain't gonna tap out anytime soon oh she's like a do herself battery i used to train I, I don't do that i still train exactly the same yeah but i'm i'm not getting on stage so but i i would train for three hours <laughs> like three hours easy you love it and it, it just because I never felt like it was enough. And I, I had that psychoness to me. And knowing that, like, okay, I'm going to be at the Olympia. Like, just yeah. pro shows in general. Like, I would train pro- way too much. Uh, I, I mean, if I did it all over again, I'm, like, so much smarter now. Mm-hmm. And I think I would I would do better. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, three hours was, like, easy peasy. What, was that, that was the, nothing. <laughs> was that, a, like, a, a mentality that you had to change? Or did somebody get involved and say, hey, listen, psycho. Oh, Chill out. oh, I mean, so I worked with George Farah and I didn't get, so I did all my own training. No, okay. one, so he just did diet, right? just nutrition. Um, but I trained myself. I never had like a, an actual person that wrote up like, this is what you want to do. So there was a couple times where we were in the same area that he, we would train together. So mm-hmm. I, the one time he was at Bev's and when we happened to be in New York at that time. So I met him to train shoulders with him. So I trained shoulders and uh, I got done, and I was like, I doesn't even feel like a train. So I no. went, and he probably doesn't know this, but I went home that night and trained shoulders again. Because <laughs> he was like, Dana, you're doing too much. Because, like, he knows me. I'm a, I'm a complete psychopath. Mm-hmm. But I did it, and I was like, I don't know, George. Like, I, I know you know what you're doing, but I've, I went home and trained him again. <laughs> I drove back home from New York. And train probably shoulders ten at ten o'clock that night because it didn't feel like enough. Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. What's that? Six hour drive. I mean, I what don't. Is it? I don't remember, but it, it's 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 like a at least four. How long were you thinking about that shoulder workout? When you get home, you're like, I'm gonna this up as soon as I get in. No, I'm sure I, that was you. Six hours of thinking. Probably, about I was it. like, I, I know. He, I'm not gonna tell him. <laughs> Here you, George. You know, I I trained again that night. <laughs> Six years later. <laughs> Sorry, George. Yeah, sorry, George. You know, I was, I said I was going to listen. He was like, you're doing too much, D. Yeah. Like, stop. <laughs> did you train, did, sorry, did you change your training style at all going into then the, the Olympia for, for the 2013? Like, did you go, you know, more, instead of the three-hour workouts, more specific things, or did you continue? No, the same it was the same. You know what? I, I did change my training. So after the second Olympia, I got second, mm-hmm. which was fine. But it was probably, I always tell people because... You know, being first is awesome. You know, I love being first. Yeah. Being number one, yeah, it feels awesome. But uh, when I got second place at Olympia, I was obviously very devastated. I was like, oh, my gosh, I thought my world was going to end. I was like, oh, my gosh, no one's going to follow me anymore. And I went back, and I remember Rob and I having, like, a pretty hard conversation. It's like, we're like, cool, what do we do now? Like, this this feels weird. You're not first anymore. Do we do something? Do we say something? And we went back to our booth and there was a five hour line. No one cared. Nothing changed. Um, And it made me realize it's like, you know, people, people do follow me and they, they love that I am competing. They follow Mm. the journey. I'm putting YouTube content out, but that's not why they they didn't start following me because I was Miss Olympia. They followed me because of everything else. Long before the time. Long before that. And I had to, it almost like, I didn't, for some reason, realize that, Hmm. but getting second and realizing, like, no, everyone's still there. Everyone's still here, and um, for the next Olympia, um, because I was always into, like, you know, going real heavy, 
And like when I would start getting ready for shows, obviously you kind of want to take care. Like you, you're a little bit safer. Like I'm not, you weren't probably maxing out your bench press like three weeks out from the Olympia. Just not smart. Um, so after getting second place, there was a whole load of stress that got taken off my shoulders because, you know, when you are first, you know, mm-hmm. the feeling like everyone's out to get you. Like they put side by sides or like flexion to one, blah, blah. Like it, it's like this whole like comparison thing. So that I, I kind of liked, cause I, you know, I like when everyone just likes me, you know, <laughs> I'm a likable person. I like when, but I don't like that. There was a whole lot of, a lot of stress that I obviously put on myself, like, this is everything you have to get first. So then when I saw like, oh, nothing changed, everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's when I actually started changing my training. So I was the strongest I ever been. Um, I was maxing out. So Arnold, there wasn't the stress. I was like this, I'm going to start training how I used to train super heavy, like heavy bent over rows. Like we're, it's like 185. Like I'm doing that for however many reps. I tried 225, like three weeks out from the Arnold. Mm. Um, I did all my max lift, uh, cause I felt so good. Um, so that was, I did a 325 squat, one rep max. I hit 225 on bench and then my deadlift was 365. What body weight? And then I was probably only up mm, 100. 30 to 120 125 pounds because on stage i was 118 stupid a little tiny tyke <laughs> little, tiny tyke. little tiny tyke yeah they'll be calling me a tiny tyke well yeah i Move mean on. girl girls are not that t- like i don't even think bikini girls are 118 anymore yeah, <laughs> on they, stage they, everybody's involved and, and that's and that's fine i actually talked about that because people come to me and they're like Ugh, i don't like i don't like how like the sport is growing. I was like, that's just the natural evolution of bodybuilding. If you look at every single year that you competed, even for, for me, every single year I got better and better and better and better. Every athlete wants to do that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go backwards. You don't want to stay the same. And it's another year of work. Of course, you're going to look better. You're going to be a little more conditioned. You're going to be a little harder or a little bigger. So it's just the natural evolution of bodybuilding. And that's kind of, and after I stepped I needed a break, so I took, you know, I was competing for 10, 10 or 11 years straight, and as an amateur, um, because I think I started competing in 2005, and as an amateur, I was doing like three, four, five shows a year, like, that's, it's a lot on your body. Back then, I didn't really know what I was doing. I would slow it down. Once I was pro, I was only doing like two shows a year, Um, three, um, the year I had to make it to the Olympia, I did three that year, but, um, I forget what, what was I even talking about. You covered <laughs> so, like three different subjects in you know, one minute. Well, you went from the evolution of bikini. Oh yeah. To talking about a five hour line to now <laughs> something else, but we'll stay on track. DLB still. So yeah. I can go back in any one of them subjects if you want. You were talking about oh, well, the, la- the last one was. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going. Know. We're going to hit all the topics today. Yeah, you yeah. Thank you for watching this segment. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. Help us by subscribing, leave a like, comment, or a positive review. Click this to see what YouTube recommends, and this to see the full interview. See you on the next one. Out.